Hey there, I'm Louie, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to crochet a, an adorable milkshake. Look how cute these guys are. So this pattern actually isn't originally designed by me. I reached out to another amigurumi artist that I admire. Her name, uh, she goes by Ravencraft Designs. Uh, you can find links to her stuff in the description below, or we go into at Ravencraft underscore designs on Instagram. Uh, so I reached out to her to do a collaboration of sorts where she crocheted something based on a theme and I crocheted something based on a theme and then we published the patterns uh, together and I kind of build it into a video and a PDF and all this other stuff. So this uh, this is her pattern. My pattern was for a little pie, which I think is pretty cute. There's actually another one right here. This is actually coming out on pie day. So uh, it actually might already be out by the time you're seeing this if you want to check that out later. But for this video, we're going to be making this adorable milkshake. So for this pattern, we're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. We're using the colors pink as our main color. We're going to do a strawberry milkshake this time. We need white for the whipped cream, red for our little cherry here, uh, and then gray for the, the glass. Um, I'm going to be using a slightly darker gray in this video. Uh, you'll also need some black thread to add a little mouth if you want one. And for the straw, I'm actually using a wooden skewer for that. And uh, the right size is about five millimeters in diameter of a wooden skewer. And I'll show you how to turn it into this uh, finished straw right here a little later on in the pattern. You'll also need, uh, I like using a nickel in the base. It helps keep them uh, a little... Uh, weighted on the bottom so that they don't tip over. You'll need some stuffing, obviously. And because I'm using all worsted weight yarn, I'm using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. You also might want a darning needle with a slightly crimped end. It helps sew in the ends. If you want to follow along with the written version of this pattern, use the link in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash shake. And by going to that link, you should be able to access the written version of the pattern if you have an account for Club Crochet. And you can actually download the PDF if you have a membership. So I'll be actually using the PDF uh, in this video. And the PDF is pretty cool because there's there's actually, uh, it's interactive. So there's check marks for each of the, um, uh, of the rounds so you can keep track of where you're at. Okay, so without further ado, let's get hooking. We're going to start by making uh, the main part, the milkshake part. Let's get these guys out of the way. Okay, so we're going to start with our gray yarn, and we're going to start with a magic loop method. If you don't know how to do a magic loop, let me show you real quick. You're going to take your palm, open hand, and you want to hold it like a little finger gun, pew pew, and take the end of the yarn and wrap it around your index finger three times. So that's one, two, three, and take this end and hold it between the middle and ring finger and pull it in. Okay, so it'll be like that. Now you take your crochet hook, we're going to place it under the first two loops on your finger here. One, two. Oopsies, I lost it. Let's grab that again. There we go. One, two. And then grab onto that last end and pull it under these two loops. Okay. Now we're going to yarn over with that same end right here and pull it through to create a chain. And that's going to lock these two loops into place. Now we can start uh, in with round one by single crocheting into this loop and then I'll show you how to close it. So for round one, we're gonna work eight single crochets into the second chain from the hook or into the magic loop. Obviously we're doing the magic loop method, but if you'd rather do the chain two method, it's just chain two and then work them into the second chain from the hook. All right, so we're gonna work eight single crochets into this loop. We're gonna go into the center of the loop, yarn over with the end here, pull through, and yarn over again and pull through two to do a single crochet. And we're going to do eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. Now we're going to pull this a little tighter. I, I like to grab the end here, the tail end, pull it slightly so you know which one of these gets pulled in. You can see it's that inside one right there. Now you want to grab that inside one and pull it away from the loop from this from the bottom right here. So pull it away. I like to pinch the bottom so it holds it in place. And that's going to close the other loop. And then we're going to grab the other end and pull that, which should tighten the other loop. There we go. That's going to be how you do the magic loop method. Let's pull it a little bit tighter so that hole's really closed up. 
Okay, so that's going to be the end of round one. There should be eight single crochets around, so let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Into this first single crochet that we made, um, this pattern is actually worked in the round, meaning that we're working in a spiral without ever turning. So for round two, we're going to start in our first single crochet that we made, and we're going to do an increase into each stitch around. So let's get into this stitch right here. And increase is just two single crochets into the same space. So we're going to go into that stitch like we just did, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over again, and pull through two. And that's going to be the first single crochet in an increase. So we're going to go into the exact same spot again, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And that's going to be an increase. So you want to do an increase into each stitch around. That's going to bring you up from eight stitches around to 16. So here's our second increase going into the next stitch. One and two. That's four, five, and six. So each even stitch should be in the same stitch as the last one. Seven eight, halfway done, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and last one right here is fifteen and sixteen. Now I'm just going to cut this little tail end a little bit shorter because it's just going to get in our way and be annoying. Throw that to the side. Okay, so now you should have 16 stitches around. That's the end of round two. For round three, we're just gonna do a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Now let's grab a little bit of an end here. Let's grab a little extra yarn so that we can keep track of where we're at. I'm just gonna use this red yarn here. Cut nice and short. And we can also use this for accent yarn for our face. So we're gonna do a single crochet into the next stitch, but I'm gonna work around this just so we can keep track of where we're at in our pattern. There we go. There we go. Single crochet one. So we're just single crocheting into each stitch around. So there's one, two, three. And I like to kind of like pinch it a little bit because this is going to be the base of your end. And if you pinch it while you're going, it kind of creates a more uh, sturdy bottom. You can always do that later as well. But again, there should just be 16 stitches all the way around. I'll just keep going around in a circle. We're almost at the end right here. You can tell because it's where the yarn is that we just worked around. Okay, boom, and Wabaum. There we go. That's going to be the end of round three. I'm going to pull this end up a little bit and pull it over. And we're going to work around it again. Just to keep track of each round. Okay, so that's the end of round three. Now you're going to want to stuff this with your nickel to add weight to the finished shake. Um, but this is going to be easier to do mid round four. So we're going to start round four and then in the middle of it, we're going to add that nickel. It's just a little bit easier to add it then. So for round four, we're just going to do an invisible decrease into each stitch around. So now we have a new stitch to work with, an invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, we're going to take our crochet hook and go into the front loops only of the next two stitches. The front loops are this loop right here. So not under both of them, but instead just under this one of the next two stitches. So take your crochet hook, go under this front loop of the first one here, I find it's easiest to do this one at a time, so under the first front loop, and then I go around it and into the next front loop. Oops, there we go. Next front loop like that. Now we're going to do a single crochet into those both those front loops to do an invisible decrease. Yarn over and pull through the front loops, yarn over a second time and pull through two. Okay, so there's one invisible decrease. Let's do it again. Take the crochet hook into the front loop of the first one, Go around into the front loop of the second one. Yarn over, pull through the front loops, yarn over a second time, and pull through both to finish that up. There you go. So that's an invisible decrease. We're going to do eight of those, so one in each uh, uh, two stitches around. So here we go. Let's do another one. This is going to be our third. Front loop, front loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. 
front loop, front loop. I like to use my nail, it helps me get into the stitches a little bit easier. Yarn over, pull through two, Ooh, there we go. Yarn over, pull through. Okay, so now we have four of them done. So one, two, three, four. Around four, since we're only gonna do eight total, we're going to stop around four and add our nickel just onto the bottom right here. Uh, pretty much any heavy coin will work. Uh, you just wanna add a little bit of weight. Okay, so I just like to add it right there. Let's continue on. And we'll do front loop, front loop. Again, your nail is going to help a lot right there. There we go. And front loop, front loop. There we go. Just two more. There we go. And then the last one's going to be right here. There we go. Okay, and now you should have eight stitches around and that's gonna be the end of round four. All right, so let's get our end here. Make sure it's the right one. In fact, we should cut one of these ends so that we don't get confused. Okay, yeah, so we wanna cut this longer end here. I just don't wanna get it confused with the other one. So let's cut that, pull it to the side. Okay, so for round five, we're going to do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So we're gonna pull this, our marker up a little bit. We're gonna work around it. And in our first two stitches, we're gonna do a single crochet. So what I like to do now is I like to like loosen the loop so that it's easier to move it around. This is just gonna make it easier to get into our stitches because we're working in very small right now. So we're gonna go into the next one right here. There's one and we're gonna yarn over and pull through. Now, once you have that pulled through, we can pull that loop a little bit tighter. So there's one and two, and then we're gonna do an invisible decrease again. So I'm gonna pull the loop out again. I'm gonna go front loop and front loop like that. Yarn over and pull through those front loops. Now, once you're through, we'll pull it a little tighter, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so it's two single crochets and invisible decrease. Now we're gonna do that one more time. Two more single crochets. Okay, here we go. One. I like to hold it like this, it makes it a little easier. Two, and then an invisible decrease. So we'll go into the front loop, into the, whoops, right there, front loop, and then there we go. Okay, that's going to be the harder round uh, for this entire piece. I, I, I think that's probably one of the most difficult ones. Okay, that's going to be the end of round five. For round six, we're just doing a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Pretty easy. We're just going to do a single crochet. So we're just going to go into this next front loop, or into this next both loops. Yarn over and pull through and do our single crochet. And as you can see, I worked around our little marker there. There's one. Two. The only thing is, at the end of this round, you got to be a little cautious because we're going to be changing colors. Three. Four. Five. And here's our sixth right here. And we're going to pull a loop through. But we're actually not going to finish it just yet. We're going to take our main color, in our case it's going to be pink because we're making the strawberry milkshake, and we're going to place it on between the two loops that are on the hook and the loop that's attached to the uh, ball of yarn. And we're going to hold it down with our index finger of our dominant hand, and with our non-dominant index finger, we're going to go in between the two, and we're just going to flip it under like that. And we're going to yarn over with the new color and pull it through the two loops. And that's going to be how we're going to change colors. And that's going to be the end of round six. So round six is over now. For round seven, we're going to be doing an increase into each stitch around. Now there's only six stitches around, so doing an increase into each stitch is going to bring us up to 12 stitches. I'm going to go ahead and leave our, well, no, we'll go ahead and pull our red our marker up a little bit. I just don't want to get confused with it. 
Okay, and we want to work around this gray yarn to, uh, to lock it into place. We only need to work around it for our first stitches though. So with our pink yarn, we're going to go into the next stitch. We went around our marker here, and we're going to work around this gray yarn to keep it in between the, the stitches. We're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch. There we go. And we're going to do another single crochet into the same stitch to make an increase. There we go. Now we can cut this gray yarn. We don't need it until we come back to the top of it. And just pull it to the side. We're going to keep doing those increases around. So there's one. We're going to do six increases total, which is going to be 12 stitches total. So here's three and four for our stitch count. Five. And six. Seven. And eight. Nine. Ten. And finally, eleven. And twelve. And that's going to bring you up from a tw uh, 6 stitches to 12 stitches. So now you should have 12 stitches around. There we go. Okay, so now that's going to be the end of round 7. Let me mark it off on our pattern here so I can keep track. And now we are on round 8. For round 8, we're going to do a single crochet into our first stitch and then an increase into our next. And we're going to repeat that 6 times total. That's going to bring you up from 12 stitches to 18 stitches. I'm not going to, uh, well, now let's do it again. I, I usually don't use a stitch marker, so it's a little bit awkward for me sometimes, you know. Okay, so we're doing a single crochet in our first one right here. One single crochet, and then an increase into our next. Okay, so a single crochet, then an increase, repeated six times in a row. So let's do our second repeat single crochet, and an increase. And again, this is going to bring you up from 12 to 18. Okay, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's keep going. 7, 8, and 9, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16, 17, and 18. There we go. That's going to be the end of round eight. For round nine, let's pull our stitch marker up. We're going to do a single crochet into each stitch round. So pretty easy, you know, just, just a single crochet all the way around. And there's 18 stitches total. If you like this design, really, please check out Ravencraft Designs. She makes really cool stuff. Um, we're already working on another collaboration uh, project for, uh, I, I think we're going to try to do it in the summer. We haven't thought of a theme just yet. If you have any suggestions for themes, actually, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm always taking suggestions for themes. And if you think there's a specific theme that that Ravencraft Designs would, uh, you feel would do, do really good, a really good job with, um, let me know. I'm thinking something like ocean themed or farm animals, maybe space, uh, something like that. Something broad enough where you can, you can, um, you can play along with it, which is why I thought it was so cool. I, I suggested sweets to her and she came up with this. I, I was not expecting a milkshake at all. It's just so cool. Okay. So that's our end of round nine. Let's mark it off. For round 10, pull our stitch marker up there. We're going to do a single crochet in the next eight stitches and then an increase. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then we're gonna do an increase into the next. Nine, 
and 10. And we're gonna repeat that one more time. So eight, sing eight more single crochets and then an increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oops, eight, and then our increase right here, nine and 10. And that's gonna be 20 stitches total. So you, sh so you should have 20 stitches by the end of this round. Let's pull our stitch marker up here. And that's going to be the end of round 10. Okay, so for rounds 11 through 15, that's five rounds total, uh, we're going to be doing a single crochet into each stitch around. So that's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, just to make sure. So five rounds in a row, we're just doing a single crochet all the way around. So just pretty easy, just single crochets into each stitch around. And now is when I can take a quick second to just, uh, again, say thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please like it down below uh, and um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really helps out. Or be, create an account on clubcrochet.com so you get notified whenever we come out with new patterns, um, just like this one. And uh, yeah, share it with us if you can. Um, we're at club.crochet on Instagram uh, and Club Crochet Official on Facebook. And please share it with Ravencraft Designs. Let her know that you made it. I'm sure she'd love to see it. Uh, if she's anything like me, she would absolutely love to see it. So this is going to be the end of round 11. Right here. Pull our stitch marker up. Continue around. Okay, so I'm just going to continue going around. Um, and I'll finish up our just rounds of single crochets. And I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I'm at the last stitch in our uh, rounds 11 through 15. So I'm on round 15 here, and I'm on my last stitch. Now, I don't want to finish pulling through yet because uh, we need to do a little something new here. So we're going to grab our gray yarn again. There we go. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pull through with two loops. So first, uh, let's grab our gray yarn, and we're going to change to gray. So uh, the same way we did with our pink yarn here, we're going to pinch it down with our index finger of our dominant hand, take our non-dominant index finger, go under the two loops and flip it under, and then yarn over with our new color, gray, and pull through with gray. Okay, but we're not just done yet. So we're gonna pull that loop out a little bit like so. Now we're gonna go back into the stitch. We're gonna go under these two pink loops with our crochet hook. So go under these two pink loops, one and two. Okay, your nail's pretty uh, useful there. And we're going to take our pink yarn now, yarn over with our pink yarn, and pull through with a second loop. Okay, so now we have two loops, one gray, one pink. Okay, so for round 16, we're gonna start with our gray yarn here. And what we're going to do is working into the front loops only, we're going to just single crochet into each stitch. Remember the front loops from our invisible decreases right here? So only into this front loop do we want to do single crochets into each stitch all the way around. So we're going to go into that front loop, do single crochet, and that's it. All we're doing is that all the way around. So there's the first front loop, so second front loop, there's two, three, and again this is going to bring. Uh, this should there should only be twenty stitches total, and this is going to make uh, your top the top of your glass of uh, for your milkshake here. And you'll kind of see what's going on. And we're going to do something called a hidden end at the very end of this to make it look all, all purdy. Keep doing our single crochets. Just a few more. And I never really got to finish saying what I wanted to, um, but if you want to share uh, this pattern with some other crocheters that you think might like it, the URL is really easy. It's just clubcrochet.com slash shake, and it should take you straight to this pattern. Um, and that's that's the easiest way to share it if you, if you like it and you have some other crocheters that you think might like it too. So we're at the end of this round right here. We're going to do our last single crochet into the front loop only. 
And then into the first gray stitch that we made right there, we're going to do a slip stitch. So we're gonna go into it, yarn over, and pull through both loops to do a slip stitch. We're gonna cut the yarn. You don't need very long ends, so just like that, that's probably just fine. We're just gonna pull that all the way through. And we're gonna take our darning needle and we're going to thread it onto our end of our yarn here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a hidden end. So how you do that, let's get my pink yarn out of the way a little bit, is you wanna go into the back of the next stitch, okay? So this is the stitch we just worked into. We wanna go into the back of this stitch right here, just like that, pull it through. Don't pull it too tight, just a little bit. And now you wanna come back into where this yarn is coming out. So right into that end right there. And then down and just kinda of like hide it into a few stitches as you go down. And then finally come out through the back loop of one of these pink stitches here. Cause we're going to work around this gray yarn a little bit later on to uh, hide it in. And you can see that kind of like creates a mimic of the, the end here, so you can't really see it. Okay, so we're just gonna leave that loop nice and loose there. Um, and we can go ahead and pull our stitch markers out now since we don't really need them. Uh, this is going to be the last bit right there, so we don't really need this. So let's go ahead and pull our stitch markers out. Let's start down here, I guess. There we go. There we go. Okay, now what you wanna do is uh, we're going to add our face. So I have a very specific place that I like to add the face. I rhymed all the time. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna add uh, these little safety beads on. I'm using, I think, six millimeter safety beads. Um, if you wanna get some, you can find them in uh, the Club Crochet shop. It's at clubcrochet.com slash eyes, should take you there. And where I like to put these, um, these eyes is I like to go right from this increase. So if you look here, you can look at all these stitches, this one's an increase. So that's our uh, first increase in our round, um, let's see, what round was that? round 10. So in round 10, our first increase, right there, you can tell there's two stitches into one place. We wanna go up a stitch and go right two stitches. So up, one, two, right there. Should be good. Okay. That's gonna be where I like to put our first one. And then our next one, we wanna go up a stitch and go two to the right or to the left of that. So they go one, two, we're gonna go to the left of that second stitch, right? there. So you can see how those eyes kind of go into place. And that's where I like to add the eyes. Now, before we lock our eyes into place, um, let's add some, some detail. So we're going to take our, I'm going to take the red, some of this red yarn to add some cheeks. Um, I have a few different ways that I like to do faces. This one, I did little eyebrows on it. Um, we're going to mimic this one though, and do our little cheeks in red. Uh, and then this guy's got little cute pink cheeks as well. So let's do our cheeks in red. We're just going to go come out through the stitch to the right, um, to the outside of each of the eyes. So for this eye, for example, it's going to be coming out through right here. Okay. And then going to go straight into where that eye is coming out. So just pull it over to the side a little bit and go right through there. This is why we do it before we lock it into place. Okay. And you don't need to pull it too tight. That's probably good. And we could just double knot this on the inside. Okay, so we go one and two. That's probably, yeah, that's, that's not bad. There we go. We can cut the ends here. I like to cut it pretty close. And we'll take the this and do it on the other side. Go just to the outside of the other eye and into right where that eye is coming out, right there. That's looking, that's, that's looking great. I like that. Okay. Go ahead and double, oop. Let's get a little bit 
extra yarn for that other side so we can double knot it a little easier. One. And there we go. We'll cut that end. Throw that to the side. Okay. I'm just going to pull these cheeks out just a little bit so they're a little bit more noticeable. Actually, that one's pretty good. Okay, now we can take our end here and we can just lock it on the inside of the of the eye right here. Like that. And if you want a good example, uh, other ways to add eyes to your Amy Groomy, check out my tutorial, um, uh, five tips for um, customizing your safety eyes. Find that uh, on my YouTube channel. It's gonna be the link right there, probably. There's uh, the second eye locked on. Whoopsies, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so we got our eyes locked into place, our cheeks on. Now, the last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add a little mouth. So this is where you're going to need your black thread. This is probably more black thread than we're going to need, but that's okay. Thread it onto the end of our needle. Um, and let's see, what kind of face do we want? We could do a little kawaii face like this, or um, let's just do a little, let's do another little smile. Uh, it's pretty easy and probably um, the the easiest one to do. So we're just gonna go out through the stitch to uh, the inside of the eye. So instead of doing the outside, what we did with the cheeks, we wanna do in the inside here. Okay, and we're just gonna go all the way across to the other side right here. Okay, you can see how that smile is gonna work. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out through where this increase is right here don't pull it too tight. And we're going to go around the mouth and back into that same stitch. That's going to hold it down. And now we can pull it a little bit tighter. That's probably good. And we want to double knot it on the inside, but you don't want to do double knot it too tightly, okay? You want to be very, very uh, gentle with this double knot because you don't want this knot to be tied any tighter than it needs to, but you also don't want it any looser than it needs to be either. You want it just about where it is. So that's one. And the best way I found to do that is make the knot and then just like follow it in with your finger. Okay. And there we go. We got a little smile. Cut those ends. Throw that to the side. Put that to the side. And there we go. We got a little... Just a little tiny smile. And we have added our face on. Okay, so now we can continue crocheting. We'll grab our crochet hook and go into this pink yarn here. Whoop, there we go. And we are on our final round of our uh, main uh, milkshake part. We're going to be using this pink yarn and we're going to be doing uh, working into the back loops of the previous round. So where we worked in the front loops for our gray, we're going to work in the back loops now. The best way to find the first one is go where that that first uh, um, gray yarn is and kind of like go exactly where that is on the inside. And that's going to tell you exactly where your first back loop is right there. Okay, and what we're going to do for this round is we're going to do two single crochets into this back loop. So we're going to go one and two and with that second one we worked around this gray yarn so we don't so we can lock it into place and you just cut it throw that to the side and now for our third stitch we do two single crochets for our third stitch we're going to do a decrease not an invisible decrease but a hard decrease so a hard decrease is going to be like this we're going to go into the next stitch okay again we're only working the back loop we're going to pull loop through like we're doing a single crochet now we're going to go into the next next stitch, so right here, pull a second loop through, and with that second loop, we're going to pull through the two on the hook. And that's going to really decrease it in. It's going to sharply decrease it into the stitch. So we're going to do two single crochets and then a decrease into each stitch all the way around. So let's do it again. We got one, two, 
and then we have our sharp decrease. Pull through, second loop, pull through, and pull that second loop through the two on the hook. Okay, so there's two. And we're gonna repeat that, um, uh, I believe it's gonna be five times around. So we got one, two, this is gonna be a third repeat. And this is gonna bring you down from 20 stitches to 15 stitches. So you should have 15 stitches around by the end of this round. So we got one, two, and then our decrease. There we go. And here's our last repeat. We got one, two, and then our decrease. Okay, and then to finish this up, we're going to slip stitch into that first pink stitch that we made right here. Slip stitch into that guy. And we're going to cut the yarn and just pull it all the way through. You don't, you can use the hidden end here if you really want to, but we're gonna cover this up with uh, whipped cream anyhow. You can see, we're just gonna cover that up with whipped cream in a second anyhow. So we're gonna go ahead and stuff that in. And now uh, let's go ahead and stuff it a little bit more. Grab a little stuffing. And the best thing to stuff it with right now is actually the skewer that we're gonna use for our um, for our uh, uh, straw. And what we really wanna do is we wanna get the stuffing into this bottom part right here. Okay, so you really wanna make sure that there's stuffing into the bottom of your, of your milkshake. And that's gonna help keep it um, sturdy so that it doesn't fall over. Okay. Be a little bit difficult to get it into there. There we go. Really make it sturdy. And with this bottom here, I like to pinch it, really pinch the bottom of it to make it like as flat as we can, like that. I might have stuffed it a little too much, but that's okay. All right. And now we want to stuff it up a little bit more. Um, you don't want to stuff it too much right now uh, because we're going to add our whipped cream and we can stuff it more when we're adding our whipped cream, but let's just add a little bit more. Okay. All right, so that's going to be the end of our main milkshake part, uh, and we're going to move on now to making our whipped cream. So we're going to put this to the side. We're going to grab our white yarn and uh, start on the whipped cream. Okay, so we're starting with a white yarn here. You can use the chain two method or the magic loop method for this. We're gonna be using the magic loop again. Okay, go around, in, and pull a loop through, and pull a second loop through to make a chain, pull it out. Okay, so for round one of our whipped cream, we're going to be working five single crochets into the magic loop. So just five, one, two, three, four, and five. Now we can pull this tighter. There we go. It's gonna be the end of round one. We're not gonna be using a uh, stitch marker here because there's only three rounds total. And for our second round, we're gonna be working into the back loops only. So remember uh, the front loop was the one closest to you. Then the back loop is this one right here the way. So into these back loops, we're going to do an increase into the next four stitches, and then we're going to make our cherry. So first do our increases into the back loops of the next four. So here's our first back loop, and we're going to do two single crochets. One, two. Here's the next one. Three, four, five, Six, and into this last, uh, this next one, we want to do seven, oops, seven, and we're going to start our eighth, but now we want our red yarn, because we're going to need it for our cherry, and we're going to do our cherry right here, so we're going to pull through with our white yarn, and you want this, actually, you want this tail end to be pretty long, so to make sure that the end is like that long right there. We're gonna pull through with our white yarn. And with our red yarn, we're going to do a mini bobble stitch. So for a mini bobble stitch, we're gonna be working into the back loop of the next stitch. For mini bobble stitch, we're going to yarn over with our red yarn, go into the back loop of the next stitch, right like that, pull a yarn over and pull a loop through of red yarn. 
Actually, let's try that again because I didn't get all the way into that back loop. There we go. Yarn over thread, pull through with thread. Yarn over a second time and pull through two loops of thread. Okay, so it's kind of like we're doing a double crochet. So there's one. Now we want to repeat that three times total. Okay, so there's our first one. Let's do it again. Yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over a thread and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. There's two, one more, yarn over, into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. There's three. Now there should be four loops on the hook, three that are red and one that's white. Now we're gonna take our white yarn, flip it under, yarn over with white, and just pull through all those loops with our white stitch, okay? We're gonna pull this one a little tighter. Now into the same stitch that I just worked into, we're going to do another single crochet. That's going to act as our last increase. There we go. Okay. Now we can actually cut the, the end of this red. You can cut it pretty close. This one needs to be long, the other one needs, can be short. And that's gonna be the end of round two. Um, now before we start round three, let's pull this loop out a little bit. We're gonna make the stem of our cherry. So we wanna take that end of yarn right here, and we wanna thread it onto a needle, and we're just going to pull it through the center of our bobble stitch right here. So just through, right through the center like that. We're just gonna pull it all the way through, okay? And now you wanna double knot it. I mean, just make one knot, sorry. You wanna make one knot and you want this knot to be long enough so that it's the cherry stem, you know? So, so just kinda of like make it, let's go like that long. And we wanna pull it, pull that knot really tight, okay? And we can cut the yarn just above that knot and that should keep it from like fraying uh, the yarn. And there we go, now we have a little cherry stem. Okay, you can grab our yarn here and continue crocheting around. Okay, so uh, for round three, again, we're working into the back loops only for round three as well. And we're going to do a single crochet into our first stitch right here. And then an increase into the next right here. Okay. So there's one, two, three. Now we're going to repeat that five times total. Our last round had 10 stitches. This round is going to have 15. So we got one, two, three. Let's continue around. Four, five, and six. Seven, eight, oops, eight, and nine. 10, 11, get that yarn out there, and 12, 13, and again, remember, we're working these back loops only, 14 and 15. Okay, now, before we finish, we want to do two more single crochets into those back loops for the end here. Just two single crochets, one and two, and then into the last one right here, we wanna do a slip stitch, still into the back loop. And now we want this end to be somewhat long because we're going to sew this onto the top of the milkshake, like that. We're just gonna pull this all the way through. Okay, now uh, let's sew this onto the top of our uh, milkshake. So. We're going to thread, first actually let's thread the middle one. So there should be two ends here. This is from the beginning. We can thread the end of that one. And we're just gonna go straight into our milkshake and come out somewhere on the back. Like just right there is fine. And that's what we're gonna use to double knot the end at the end here. Okay, now we're gonna thread this other end. And we're going to do, um, we're gonna work into each of the stitches around from our final round here. So if you go, if you count around, there should be 15 starting at this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, oops, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15 is where we made that last slip stitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that first one right here and come out through 
the next stitch like that, okay? And now what we're gonna do on this is we're gonna go in through just the back loop and then back through where we came out and in through the next stitch right here. We're gonna continue that process around each one around and we wanna pull it a little bit tight there. There's one and I'm gonna go back loop into the same stitch, come out through the next, okay? Oops. Two, back loop into the same stitch and out through the next. Pretty, pretty easy. I mean, this, this part's a little confusing, but it, it's not too bad, right? Back loop. I mean, sewing things together is always the worst part of amigurumi, in my opinion. Okay, back loop. There we go. Okay, continue it around. Getting closer to the end here. Actually, we're only about halfway. <laughs> but we are getting closer, that wasn't wrong. And there should be one stitch for each stitch. You know, there should be 15 stitches around for a whipped cream, and there's 15 stitches around for our last round of our milkshake as well. Yeah, I really don't like sewing things together. Um, it's actually my least favorite part of making amigurumi. And originally, this pattern, when, uh, when Lucy sent it over, or not Lucy, uh, Raven, I think her name is Raven, when she sent it over, uh, it had a strawberry with um, some green yarn, and, and the green yarn was sewn to the strawberry, and the strawberry was sewn onto the whipped cream, and I was like, I'm going to make this a cherry, and the reason is because I don't like sewing things on, <laughs> and also I think it's just a little easier. Okay, so we're almost done sewing this together. Now, before we finish this up, let's take a little bit more stuffing, and let's go ahead and add the stuffing in before we finish sewing this together. Let's see how we're doing here. Uh, that's okay. We can add a little bit more. It's, it's a little, he's a little squishy. We want a very full milkshake, you know? I don't want to be cheaped out here with a loosely filled milkshake. I want that milkshake with that extra bit of milkshake that they give you. All right, there we go. And continue sewing it around. You know what I mean though? You know when they give you a milkshake and then they also give you the, the metal thing which has extra milkshake that you can add to your milkshake? I'm saying milkshake more times in this video than I have probably all year long. Milkshake. Okay, just a few more. This is where it gets a little tricky. This is why you want the crimped end. It makes it a little bit easier. Just a couple more. This last one, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it through before I go in to the stitch. Oopsies. I made a knot somehow. There we go. I did not. Now this last bit, I'm gonna go one more. So I'm gonna go into this one, pull it into our stitch. And now I'm gonna come back out where we came through the, the first one right here. And I'm just gonna do it one more time into our piece just to really make certain it's sewn on. And we're gonna come out through the same place where we came out with our white yarn here. Okay, really get it in there. You want the gray yarn to go around the sewn part of the white yarn so it's hidden in there. And we're just gonna double knot these on the inside. Just like so. There's one and a double is a two. Now we can cut our yarn 
and we can take the end here and just stuff it back in. Okay, so there's our main part of our milkshake is all complete. Now, the last thing that we want to add is the straw. So here is how we're going to do the straw. Let's put this guy to the side right there. I'm going to take a little bit of cardboard. You can see I have a couple holes poked in there. We're going to take our skewer and we want our straw to be about three inches long. Uh, we can just pretty much eye that, um, but if we want, we can, we can check on our finished piece here. Let's go about like, you can keep actually this, the pointed end if you want. Um, we'll use the pointed end just because it'll make it a little bit easier to stuff it in. We're gonna cut the end off of the pointed. I suggest using scissors that are not your normal scissors because uh, this will, um, this could dull your scissors a little bit. So I like to use a little bit sturdier of scissors for this. So I'm gonna cut off the very end there. We're gonna measure it to say like, let's go about like right, let's go like right to there. And what I do is I find the end here and I just like poke it or cut it. And I like just kind of like slowly squeeze it and twist it to get a perfect end. And then we just cut it off. Okay. And that should keep a very soft end there. But if you want, you can use sandpaper to really make sure it's soft. Now, a uh, uh, this straw, yeah, that would work. That, like this, this would work. But what would be cooler is if it was white. Uh, like an actual milkshake straw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke it into our cardboard so that it's sticking straight up. And we're going to take a little bit of white out. Let's go ahead and just mix it up a little bit. We're going to take our white out. And you want to be very careful with this because this could get everywhere and it would be a real shame. And I, I really want to be careful. You know what? Look at it. I'm already getting white out everywhere. Okay. Be very careful. One time I used fingernail polish on here and I spilled it everywhere and it was terrible. Um, okay, so we're going to actually hold it. <laughs> we're just going to do it over this white thing here. And we're just going to paint it up. We don't need too much of it painted. Just like that. And you can use fingernail polish for this as well if you don't have white out. I just figured white out's relatively easy to get and it dries very fast. So you don't need to worry about it drying too much and if you actually get um oh there we go all right so that's nice and nice and white now i'm just going to place this back into our cardboard keep it straight up we're going to sit very gently put it back into this white out we're going to put it to the sides so we don't spill it everywhere now i'm going to wait for this to dry a little bit and we're going to color it up with a red sharpie to do uh, little lines. You don't need to color it up, obviously. You can just have a white straw if you'd like. Um, but I think it's kind of cool if we do a little candy cane thing as we go up. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit and color it up with our Sharpie once it's a little bit drier. Thanks for watching. We'll get back to the pattern in just a sec. If you like this video, please take some time to like and subscribe down below. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss the next pattern, click that little bell icon or join the Club Crochet newsletter in the description below. And if you really like this content a lot, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. Members get early access to future content as well as access to the ever-growing Club Crochet library, a library of exclusive patterns and tutorials. Members even get kits mailed directly to their door with all the materials I use in each video. Plans start at only $5 a month. You can learn more at clubcrochet.com. All right, let's get back to the pattern. Okay, so let's check this out, let's see if it's dry. That's relatively dry. I mean, it's not totally dry, but it's enough so that we can draw on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Sharpie and we're just going to uh, kind of swirl it up. Now, this is kind of difficult uh, to be completely honest. It's kind of difficult to make sure that it's perfect. But what I like to do is keep one end on something and then just kind of start twisting it as we draw on it. Oopsies. See, so that's a little close. Luckily, we're only going to see about from there up, so we get a little bit of chance for it to be um, a little bit easier. So we want a little bit further away. Let's go like... Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks like a pretty good distance. Okay, so now we'll just continue going around. keeping the, Try to keep as a similar angle and thickness to your stripe. Another option for this could be uh, if you have some like red 
very thin red tape. That could also work. Also using a coffee stirrer for a straw would work. Or an actual straw. I'm just gonna keep twisting around. Try to be as gentle as we can. Try to keep a similar thickness in our stripe and a sim similar distance away from the previous stripe. Okay, almost done. A little bit more, as you can tell, I'm pretty focused because I don't want to mess it up right at the end here. And as I say that, watch me jinx it. Okay, almost done. There we go. We got a little candy caned uh, um, straw there. So I'm gonna put it back into here and we're gonna let this dry a little bit because you really want this to be dry before you put it into your uh, milkshake. I'll show you what happens when you don't. Um, you can barely see it, but you can see all this little red marks. That's because I just was in a rush and I just shoved it right in there. Um, and I would just avoid doing that if you can. So we're just gonna let this dry a little bit more and we're just gonna place it into the top of our milkshake. Okay, so I believe this is dry enough. And now we're just gonna hold it from the top here. We're gonna go from the opposite side of our cherry. Let's go like right here. And we're just gonna kind of twist it in. This is why the pointed end could be a little bit easier. Oh, there's I might have stuffed it a little bit much, making it's making it a little bit difficult for us. Oh, look at that. I totally screwed up it because I didn't wait long enough because I was being impatient. Okay, so I think this is a little bit long. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut the end here, make it a little bit shorter. Ooh. And now we're going to try putting it in there. We're not going to smear it any more than we already have. There we go. And now we have another little milkshake. Oh, this one's great. I love this one. We're going to make sure to give that to my mom. She's going to like that. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it down below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get new uh, patterns just like this one. Uh, I try to add at least one per month. Um, my next one, or probably actually before this one, is going to be this little pie pattern. So if you like that pattern and you want to check out my version of this sweets-themed patterns, uh, check out this pie pattern. It should be just at clubcrochet.com slash pie. Uh, but yeah, make sure to subscribe down below, click the little bell icon to uh, enable notifications, or join the email list by creating an account at clubcrochet.com. Also, make sure to check out Ravencraft Designs. Uh, go to ravencraft-designs.blogspot.com, uh, or you can check out the links in the description below um, to get uh, more of our patterns, just like this one. Thank you so much for watching. Pasta la pizza, and happy hooking. Bye. Uh, I was going to do like a slurping milkshake sound, but that sounds gross. So I'm just going to make him go, whoa.